Okay, hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. My name is Count David. I'm a little bit discouraged by all you people that come out. I recognize you and know some of your houses. You see, I am the heat-sucking vampire. <laughs> and I love, let me tell you a little bit about myself. You may be more familiar with my uh, much more well-known cousin, but way less cool uh, vampire Count Dracula. Well, I am the cooler one. And oftentimes you see him flying around as a bat, but me, I am a vapor. And I love to, st to slide underneath your windowsills. There is nothing better than an inefficient house. And something that I love even more than that is the pink insulation that you put in all your walls. This is horrible for air insulation and uh, ceiling, and so I love it very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I appreciate that you all come here today. And I have a counter-proposal. You will learn about weatherization, but I invite you to have me come to your home. And I will tell you about ways that you can spend lots of money on heating and never heat your home. <laughs> so please, invite me over. I will be there in a moment. And in the meantime, turn up your heat and leave your windows open. Thank you very much. Uh, I will, it is my pleasure to introduce the executive director of Sustainable Woodstock, who will tell you a little bit about the campaign, followed by a presentation by Mr. Paul Markowitz. So please uh, welcome me and welcome in uh, Michael Corruto. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> that was a very good presentation. <laughs> so welcome, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone who's been involved with setting up this event and has in the past, organizations and agencies, Efficiency Vermont, especially for launching the statewide Button Up Hero campaign, Paul Markowitz from Efficiency Vermont's program manager, Paul, uh, for giving the presentation tonight that's going to follow me and for helping coordinate the button-up efforts with the 43 towns around the state. And Vital Communities for piloting the project last year, which we participate in. And Friends, Van De Ven and Van De Ven LLC for being a regular weatherization partner and for being our selected installer for our campaign. And all the volunteers of Sustainable Woodstock's uh, Energy Action Group for leading the effort in Woodstock. So those of you who are members of the Energy Action Group, please raise your hand so we can see where you are. Thank you very much. So weatherization, just a couple of quick comments, significantly reduces energy use, as you know, saves money, creates healthier home environments, fights climate change by reducing your home's carbon footprint, and also, as Franz would attest to, creates jobs. <coughs> It's not as sexy as some of the other things, like putting in a solar array, but it's extremely effective. The US Department of Energy has done quite a few studies about weatherization, and they find that on average, weatherization saves 10 to 20% of the energy cost in any given house. Single family homes that weatherize save around $225 a year on average after they've done that. And when you include health and safety costs, the benefits of weatherization, Every dollar spent on weatherization saves about four dollars. Low-income households especially carry a larger burden for energy costs. Older housing stock, not necessarily as well maintained or, or insulated. So it's especially important for us to be able to reach uh, everyone from all walks of life with weatherization programs. And many people of low-income households can save up to 16% on their total energy costs in any given year after weatherizing. So it's really a great thing to do. And we often at Sustainable Woodstock like to say, um, do one thing if you can do one thing, whether it's strip, weather stripping a window. Uh, one of the biggest things you can possibly do if you don't have in, uh, insulation in your attic, that's probably one of the most uh, important and effective ways of really reducing your home heating costs. So, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Paul Markowitz, the program manager for Efficiency Vermont. So thank you, Paul, for being sure. here tonight. Sure. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. <coughs> and Paul, these mics are live, so. Yeah, I actually have a mic here, because I already told him I don't like to stand in front of a, po behind a podium. It feels very kind of constraining. Hi, um, nice to be here. I actually, have a little entertainment for you, just to start. I mean, it's all, uh, 
It was a hard act to follow, the Count Dracula over there, but I, I have a little bit of an act. So this is a, a tune from um, some old Muddy Waters tune uh, that I borrowed. Uh, this is called The Weatherized Man. You ready? I was sitting in my house on a cold and windy day when I heard my wife cussing. This is what she had to say. This house is freezing and the thermostat's on high. You don't do something soon, you see a grown woman cry. And now he's here. The weatherized man is here. He's our hope, our salvation. The weatherized man is here. And what about those icicles? They must be a mile long. And our heating bills have gone crazy, but don't get me wrong. All we need is some air sealing and some insulation too. Then our house be nice and cozy, baby. Just me and you, and now he's here. The weatherized man is here. He's our hope, our salvation. The weatherized man is here. That's it. Yeah. And you're going to be hearing from the weatherized man, Franz here, after I talk. So it's like, like you got the song, then you got the man. You know, it's like, it's crazy. All right. So we're here to talk about button up and how you guys can make your home more comfortable, save energy, help the environment, all sorts of good stuff. So we could talk, start off talking about just a little bit of like 101 on how homes lose heat. Maybe a little counterintuitive to what you normally think. And then we'll talk about some of the energy resources uh, and uh, incentives that are available. And then we're going to talk about how this free contractor visit piece works and how you can participate like tonight. You don't have to, leave, you don't have to wait. We've got forms right here. You can fill them out. You can sign up tonight. And then we're going to hear from Franz. And then what else? Pizza, food, bathrooms. Bathrooms? Back there? Up there. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure all your needs are met. All right. So... Um, the great thing about energy efficiency is like, by doing one thing, you get all sorts of benefits at the same time. You reduce energy use, you s energy costs, right? Helps the environment. Um, a lot of things people don't know about is it improves your house durability. Anybody got large icicles hanging from the corner of your, one of your, of your house, right? That is like a sure sign that you've got what happening? What's happening when you see those large icicles? Heat what? Heat loss. Heat loss. Air is escaping through the attic, warming the snow on your roof. It melts, gets to the edge, refreezes. They look really pretty, but they're really bad for your house. Get up underneath the eaves, get in that, you know, cause freezing, thawing, water damage. Nasty, right? Health and safety. One of the things we're going to talk about tonight is it's not just efficiency, but it's about whole home health and safety. So when a contractor comes in, they're not just like air sealing, insulation, that kind of thing, but they're looking to make sure your home is healthy. We're going to talk about that. Um, and what you can do to make sure it's healthier. Like, do you have a bathroom fan? Why do I need a bathroom fan? What do bathrooms generate a lot of? They generate a lot of moisture. moisture. And why is moisture not such a great thing if you got too much of it in your house? Mold and mildew, right? We know all the problems associated with that. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And good for the environment, right? You're burning less oil, propane, whatever fuel you're using, it's less particulate pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, good for the environment. So it's like all those things and all I have to do is insulate and air in my house? Yes, it's great. So, so the main kind of uh, parable, no, um, simile, um, example, how about that? The main example I want to use is uh, about the, what needs to be done in your home when you think about uh, home weatherization is there's two primary things that a contractor will do when they come in. There's air sealing and insulation. And the example we use is if it's the middle of January, it's you know zero degrees and the wind's blowing 20 miles an hour and you go outside with a sweater, you're going to be warm? No, 
because the wind is just going to rip right through you. But if you put on some type of windbreak to, to stop the air from coming in, you know, like a, some type of garment that stops air, air, air from coming in, then that stops the air coming to your body and allows the sweater, the insulation layer, to do its job. Right? And that's super similar to like what a house is. Very, very similar. Okay? Because what we know is that air moves through insulation, unless it's really tightly packed, like dense pack. It moves through insulation. Think about if you have a furnace, what's the filter you use on your furnace? What's it made out of? Fiberglass. Fiberglass, that's right. So, in fact, you can crawl around in attics, and if you see dirt in your insulation, you know what that means? It means that's air movement from your heated space into the great outdoors, and it's carrying all those dust particles, right? So that's what contractors will look for to find and say, oh, there's a place where you got air leakage because I can see all the dirty insulation, right? So, so the, this is actually a little bit of science. You can go home and say, oh, I didn't know that, or maybe you knew that. Um, but what you see here is we often think of, oh, air rises. Everybody knows that, right? But it's actually happening in a house. It's actually a more dynamic situation, something called the stack effect, okay? And so what's happening is when the hot air is leaking out through the leaks in your attic, it's actually sucking in the cold air in the bottom part of your house. And it actually creates a pressurized situation. So it's more than just like, oh, air is leaking. It's actually being forced out of your attic. So it accentuates the air loss. Right? And so what you can see there is the cold air leaking in through the bottom, the hot air pushing. It's not just making its way. It's actually being pushed out. The, the, the attic. So what you need is to create, the first thing is to create an air barrier before you put in the insulation. And that's kind of that, that um, windbreaker. I know those things are called. Yeah, I got one. All right. Um, and the priorities, you know, you often think like, well, I live in my living space, first and second floor. I got to weather strip my windows and my doors, which is important. It's definitely important to stop those drafts running your body. But the biggest savings are air sealing and insulating your attic, followed by air sealing and insulating your basement. That's where the big savings are. And we don't think about it because they're generally out of sight and out of mind. We don't live in our attic and don't spend a lot of time in our basement unless it's a finished space, right? <laughs> so you got to stop those air leaks, and I'm going to show you a few of those. And then you got to do the insulation. So you got to do first. And what's kind of interesting is maybe it's been 20 years, 25 years. We didn't think so much on the air sealing part 25 years ago. It was more like, throw some, slap some insulation in there and you're fine. And this is kind of relatively, what do you think, 25, 30 years? Yeah, where this, the building science, this idea of stop the air leaks and the insulation combination, right? So what you'll see is, I got insulation in my attic, and you know what? If it's not air sealed, it's probably not doing that great a job. And as the count over there talked about, if you got some fiberglass bats up there, Probably not doing much either, right, <coughs> on their own. So just going to show you what we mean. What is he talking about with that? It was air sealing, right? So you can see we have a couple of examples right here. This is in your attic, right? This plumbing, like, vent pipe, right? So what you can see is they drilled a three-inch hole, put a two-inch pipe. See all that space around the pipe? That's hot air is escaping, heated air you've paid for burning oil, propane, or whatever, is escaping from your living space into the attic, and then into the outdoors. And you have all sorts of those kind of what they call penetrations in your attic. Think about uh, recessed lighting. Think about fans that are set into that building, right? All, you know, just all along the eaves in terms of the top plates. All around the chimney, huge one around a chimney. You've got a chimney that comes around. Unless you stop those air leaks between the framing and the chimney, Oh my God, unbelievable amount of energy. So that's one of the things that a, that a contractor will do is stopping all those air leaks and insulation. And you can see in the basement, that's a, the box sill and the, the mud plate. You can see right here, this is all above grade. No insulation value in this wood or concrete, right? Air leaking in here, conductive or basically lack of insulation leaking there. And what they've done is put in some rigid board and then insulating around that to stop that, to provide some insulation, stop some air leakage. Just a couple of examples just to give you 
a sense of all these things we don't see, they're kind of out of sight, but they're costing you money. Okay. Right. So any concept on that? I mean, any questions on the, this air sealing, insulation, shelf, where your insulation is? It's kind of straightforward, but how many people were a little surprised about the air sealing piece? I know I was when I first learned about it. It's like, oh, it makes sense, but I never really thought about it, you know? So, so I did want to also talk about this healthy, safe homes, right? That when a contractor comes in, you're getting a twofer. You're going to be able to reduce your energy costs, make your home more comfortable, and they're going to make sure that some key health and safety issues are addressed, right? We've labeled a couple of them. Carbon monoxide caused by incomplete burning. So one of the things that they'll do is they'll do a, a combustion test on your, your, your furnace or your boiler. Make sure it's combusting right and not emitting you know, uh, carbon, carbon monoxide into your living space. They'll look at things like backdrafting. Backdrafting is you, know, you, need, you need oxygen for, your, for, let's say, your furnace to, to work properly. right? If there's not enough oxygen for whatever reasons, then it could take the, the flu gases, those combusted, uh, you know, the combusted gases, and draw it back down so it makes sure it's getting enough of fresh air. And we don't want that stuff coming back into our house. So they'll look at issues like that. They'll look at moisture, uh, issues such as moisture and mold. You know, the key thing about moisture is try to minimize what's coming in from the outside, and whatever you got already on the inside, get it out of the house. Right? In general, get it out. So that's, you know, whether it's ventilation or some type of, uh, depending on how tight your house, some type of energy recovery ventilation. So, and other health and safety. So that's part of that. That's their whole package, right, of what they do in terms of what their, what their job is. And so there's a whole suite of contractors, of which uh, Franz is one of them. There's a whole suite of contractors out there that, participate in a program that's managed by Efficiency Vermont. Uh, by the way, did, did I say who Efficiency Vermont was? How many people have heard of Efficiency Vermont? <laughs> All right, I love it. So then you know that we're the state's energy efficiency utility. We help homeowners, businesses, municipalities, everybody save energy, electrical energy, thermal energy. We're actually supporting modern wood heating. We do, a, you know, support heat pumps. Um, and we're already paid for it in your rates. And one of the things we do, I'm going to explain, is we provide incentives to help people weatherize their houses. Right? Um, oh, there it is. Up to $2,000. I knew there was a slide on that. Up to $2,000 to help offset the cost of weatherizing your home. And it generally works out to about 15 or 20% of the cost of a project. So there's a whole slate of contractors out there, private contractors, who do this for a living, do this plus maybe other things for a living, right? And in order to participate in that program, they have to follow certain protocols. So, and they have to sign agreements with us. And they have to do standardized, when they go into a home, these are the things they look at. And they have to report back to us. So the reason why that's important is there's some quality control. You're making sure you're getting people that have some type of minimum standards of training, education, and following uh, process. All these contractors, all these contractors have been certified through something called the Building Performance Institute (BPI). Certified, uh, they have to, in order to participate in our program, they have to be BPI certified. Um, in order to be eligible for the Efficiency Vermont incentives, they have to be BPI certified and participate in our program. So I think there's a measure of comfort if I was in your shoes, knowing that you know. These aren't just folks who have just walked off the street and you know, got a spray foam gun in their hand. So, so any questions about the contractors, how the, just kind of the, who are these people who would do the work, you know? Why do I want them in my house? Why can't I just call, you know, the guy down the street, he's, you know, fixed, uh, you know, some, done some work around my house. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why I would make sure you go with a contractor that's participating in our program. Thoughts, questions? So far, good? All right. Um, so the average cost of a comprehensive work, and again, I think this, this pretty much covers 
the attic and the basement, that's the primary work that we're talking about. This is what you see around 7,800. The average rebate's around 15. The average savings are around 26, though I understand that numbers come down, it might be in the 20, 25, but I could say in my house, uh, I have a 1903 kind of Victorian kind of thing, add-on, you know, standard Vermont kind of house. And we've cut our energy bill in half over like 15 years, just chipping away at it. Just like, now we're gonna do this, now we're gonna do that, and chipping away. So, you know, especially if you have an older house, the opportunities for savings are just huge, really huge. Um, um, and as I mentioned, we got the efficiency mod incentives there, so. Keep going, is this good? All right, I'm keeping this guy busy. He's like, he's not falling asleep on me, you know what I mean? All right. Can I say something, Yes. It's key that you said chipping away. You don't have to do it all at once. <coughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Then it looks like a huge expense. Right. Just, you know, uh, do one thing at a time. Right. And the other thing we're going to talk about is it doesn't mean I got to hire a contractor to do all of it. No. Maybe there's some things I can do myself. And we're going to talk about our do-it-yourself program. So think about, like, what can I do myself with my skill level, you know, my do-it-yourself abilities, and what do I need a contractor? And what can I do now? And maybe I can't afford to do it all, and maybe I'll do something else in three or four. That's what we did. We did the attic. Four or five years later, we went and did the basement. Or you can do it all, you know. So it's like do what you can with the resources you have. It's like for what I think of it is, why should I wait any longer to live in a cold, uncomfortable house? You know, when I can take the work, my house is going to be more comfortable, I'm going to reduce my energy costs, right? And if you work it right, which we're going to talk about, it's not going to cost me any more on an annual basis. Okay. So what I want to talk about is <clears throat> this great program supported by Efficiency Vermont, managed by the Vermont State Employees Credit Union, VSECU. It's called the Heat Saver Loan Program. And they have Loans, it's not just for efficiency, but energy-related work. You can install modern wood heating if you want. Up to 35K, 100% of the cost, up to 15 years term, okay? And really low interest, depending on your income level and the term. So the idea here, what I want to plant the seed in your house, is like, you know, I'm already spending $1,500 a year on energy. I can't afford to spend another nickel to, for a loan payment. You know, so what I want to, the seed I want to plant in your head is that, is that if your savings are enough and you can stretch the term of your loan out, that your new energy costs are going to be reduced and that the savings that you're going to realize will cover the loan payment. So if you think about, let's say I'm spending, I'll just say $100 a month on average, right, on energy costs. My new energy costs, let's say I reduce them 20%, so that's $80 a month, and my loan payments are $15 a month. I'm pulling these numbers out of it. So basically, instead of spending $100 a year, a month on my energy costs, I'm now spending 95 on my new energy costs and on my loan repayment. And that's what you want to try, what we call positive cash flow. So it doesn't cost you any more total. Your total energy cost is actually less, right? I'm not going to sit here and say we can promise you that, and this is what's going to turn out, but even if you get close, right? The other concept I want to get across is return on investment. A lot of us like, oh, I can put my money here, and I can put my money here, right? So how much, how much are you getting on your treasury notes right now? 2%? How much are you getting on your savings account right now? Half a percent, right? We're talking energy. 5, 10, 15% return on investment. So if you just want to think dollars and cents, it's a good place to put your money. You're investing in your house. We talked about the durability. It's a good place. It's a good way to go. So there is some information in the back. Can you hold that heat saver loan program information sheet? Yeah, I like that. It's, yeah, it's a greenish one. Yeah. So grab one of those. Talks all about the interest rates. It's a great deal. You do not need to be a member of the credit union or whatever. Any Vermonter can, be, can apply for this. So I also want, in terms of resources, just to make sure people are aware, is this, there's a statewide program. In this part of the state, it's run by SEVCA. They're based out of Springfield. Uh, the Weatherization Assistance Program. 
And this was for folks who are income qualified. It's generally 80% or less of median income. To be honest, it really is more like 60% in terms of who they, 60% or less median income in terms of who they can get to in terms of the, there's a waiting list. Why? It's a free service, right? They'll come in, weatherize your home, basically do pretty much the same thing that one of the contractors we're talking about here will do the air sealing, insulation. And I want to make sure you know that if you fall in that range, particularly less than 60% of median household income, uh, uh, that you're eligible for this program. It's a, it's a great program. There is a waiting list. There's all sorts of criteria in terms of the lower your income. If you're a senior, disabled, you get, start to get bumped up. So, uh, but it's, it's a great program. Uh, yeah, SEVCA covers this part of the state. So, any thoughts on some of the resources, the incentives that Efficiency Vermont offers, the Heat Saver Loan Program, weatherization assistance? Add something real quick, Paul. Too, um, uh, and some some folks already uh, got this when they came in. But we also have another organization in the area that helps folks with weatherization, and it's Cover Home Repair, and it's out of White River Junction. And they have two different types of projects that they do. One is weatherization that during the winter time, and then the other one is um, emergency household situations. This is a dangerous situation. Um, this is also a free service. I think the only thing they actually request is that you provide lunch for them. Um, but it's similar for the qualifications for SEVCA to apply. Um, last year, Cover Home Repair, um, or since 2014, they've completed 22 urgent home repair or weatherization projects in Woodstock, and, and they spent about $8,250 per year on over projects here in our town. And again, this is a free service, and the town does not contribute. So we are requesting that the town uh, contribute some funds to cover home repair this year uh, so that we can increase access to, to this program for our low income families. So if you're a Woodstock resident, I um, ask you to come back and sign a petition afterwards. But Cover is a great organization. As well. Right, and what's also great about them is it's actually a volunteer. Their whole reason for being is to provide opportunities for volunteers to give back to their community. So they're trained, you know, whatever, and you know, people with various skill levels, and they get them out in the community. So it's, it's, that's kind of the cool thing, too. All right, so I'm going to switch gears, and I'm going to talk about this free contractor visit and how to participate. Okay? All right. So the reason this is a little bit of a big deal is oftentimes, in this kind of in the past, and still in many situations, contractors will charge you three to $400 to come into your home and do an energy audit. And that's fine. Some people like, I want the full report, and... They spend three, four hours in your home. They do something called a blower door test. People familiar with this? It's a big fan. They depressurize your home so you can see what the air leakage is, write up a very detailed report, right? But a lot of people, that's a little bit of a barrier. I, I got to spend three or four hundred dollars to find out what my energy, I just want to quote, you know, like a roofing contractor or, you know, other kind of contractor to come into your home, right? So that's what this program is. It gets the contractor in your home for no cost. It's not, they don't, aren't doing an energy audit, which is a much more detailed, involved process. But they're doing a visual walkthrough, right? And I have to think about these guys have been into hundreds of homes. I bet Franz has been into thousands of homes, right? Oh, yep, raised rents, 1960, yep, mm-hmm. Kind of the, yep, 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 this is say, yep, that kind of thing. So they know this knowledge. And the, when they use the tools like a blower door, you know, this is almost like confirming or confirming what they know based upon their visual test. Right? So what they do is we'll come in and do this visual test and I'm going to explain it. And what you do is complete this form, which you probably saw in the back, and I'm going to toggle to here maybe with, if the force is with me. I'll be able to do that. Did it show up? All right, there it is. And that's basically what that form looks like in the back, right? You're, you have the opportunity to fill it out here or take it home. I would, now, if you're going to take a hard copy, fill it out here and leave it. Or you can go online, right? This actually says Hartford, but yours is the Woodstock one. And you can see, you know, do I own my own home? We do say if you're a renter that 
this is for a homeowner. So if you're a renter, you want to talk with your, with your landlord, your property owner, right? Um, when you get to the, if you're online, it'll ask you what town you live in. If you go on, you're going to have to click, click Woodstock in order for this to work for you. So that's the, one of the very first questions. It's not here because this is just for uh, Woodstock, the copies we have in the back. Ask you for your contact information. You can see some information about your home. Again, it's like, what can you, nobody's asking you to, you know, go out there and get your tape measure and give the exact measurements of your home. It's like, what do you know off the top of your head, right? Foundation type. I mean, maybe you got to crawl to go down your basement and say, oh yeah, is that finished or not? I don't know. I haven't been down here in three years, right? Uh, basement characteristics, access. These are all things to give the contractor kind of a better understanding of what your housing situation is. And then you can see this information. How do you heat your home? How much do you spend a year? Again, you don't need to call up your fuel dealer. It's like, what do you, oh, I think I spent about, yeah, about 1,200 last year, 14, something like that, right? That's fine. What are some issues that you have? So then they really start to get at, you know, what the problems are, right? Um, I'm assuming people are here tonight because they know there's something not exactly right. I have opportunities to do something in my home and I've been sitting on my hands for how many years and now I finally, you know, got a little kick in the butt here and I'm going to do something, right? Um, and this big one, what are you most hoping to address? What's the thing? What's your pain point? What's really motivating you here? And you can see, oh, actually, so here uh, you only have one contractor, Franz from uh, Van de Ven Construction, uh, and you'll be able to click that and, um, yeah. So I'm going to go back to this guy, assuming I can find it. Yep, where she will all. Uh, from current slide. Nope. All right. So if you don't fill out the hard copy tonight, um, then we encourage you to go online. Do we, um, do we have any of the, the business reply envelopes? Did you get, do you have those with you? No. Okay. So I think the complicated, you know, it's just that if you take a hard, if you're not, let's say, I love working with computers, take a hard copy, mail it to Efficiency Vermont. The ideal is either fill out the copy here and, and Zach will get it up to us, or go online and then it automatically happens. Right? So what happens is the contractor, in this case it's Franz, right? If you go online, you click, he's going to automatically get an email saying, you know, Mrs. Smith is interested in having some, a walkthrough. It'll send a copy of your the information that you just filled out uh, to the contractor, right? If it's, if it's a hard copy, we'll get it, and we'll enter that information, and he'll get the information that way, right? And what we've said is within three days of getting that information is the contractor will contact you to set up a time to do a free walkthrough, okay? You can also see this other one, community partners follow up with customers to encourage them to move forward. So, our partner here for Efficiency Vermont and Woodstock is the Woodstock Energy Committee. Is that your official name? Uh, yeah. We're the Sustainable Woodstock Energy Action Group. Mouthful. That one. <laughs> That's the one. So this is a partnership with us, and we're, we're working in a number of communities around the state. And so you might be getting a call from, from the count over there saying, I, I want to keep sucking hot air out of your house, but... Uh, I understand you've signed up for a con, you know, you've got the proposal. How are things going? You know, so do you have any questions? Can I make, direct you to the right resources? They're not going to be energy experts and say, oh, no, I don't think you should insulate your basement. That's a bad idea. That's not going to happen. They're there to encourage you to move forward. So you might be getting a call. That's part of the partnership. I did this program in Montpelier earlier this year, made a lot of calls, and people really appreciate the kind of, because I'm not like, Community volunteers, it's not like they're getting some kickback here. It's not like they're getting, it's like they're doing it to help people in their community. And so people really appreciate that little reminder. So when the contractor prepares this assessment, remember it's a visual assessment. Okay, it's not, they're not doing the blower door. They might have the infrared camera. You're familiar with the infrared camera? Kind of takes pictures and can sell the differential between hot and cold places. So you can see where air is leaking you know, like, let's say, out your walls, right? Um, uh, 
visual assessment. No blower door. It takes generally like hour, hour and a half. What do you think, from? That's in the ballpark, right? You should be there. This isn't like, I'll be in my office. Let me know when you get there. It's like, you should be there because this is part of your education. And what you're going to find is like the contractor is going to walk through and they're going to go, oh, do you see those boxes right there? There's no insulation. Or you see that fiberglass that's stuffed up in there? That's not doing anything. You're losing energy up the wazoo, right? So it's part of your education, and it brings it home. It's like it goes from the theoretical to like, oh, so that's where all my energy heating bill is going, right up there or over there. So it's part of it, and it's supposed to bring it home because you know there's something wrong. You know you need to do something, and it makes it real. That's all I can, you know, by getting the professional in the house who knows, who knows their business. Um, so after they do the walkthrough, within two weeks, they've committed to providing you with a proposal. And the proposal is a cost proposal, scope of work, and then what the savings. And even broken down, maybe it's going to be attic, here's the work, scope, estimated savings, basement, et cetera, total project cost type of thing. Um, if you guys move ahead with the work, the first thing they would do when they come to your house to do the work is set up the blower door. That's part of the protocol that they agree to when they sign up for it with Efficiency Vermont. It's also BPI. They have to do that. And what that does is it measures how much air is moving through your house, cubic feet per minute, under a pressurized situation. And then after they do the work, then they'll measure it again. And then you'll be able to see the differential. Right? If you have an old house having a lot of work, for sure, you're going to get 10% air leakage, probably 20 and 30, depending on how old your house is and what work has been done on it before. Um, so that's one of the first things that they would do. Is it a full energy audit with the full scope of work? I'll let Franz answer that. There's not a lot of differentials. It's just kind of a question of like what you're paying for up front, right? And it's getting somebody, it's like eyes on. Get a professional in your house, have eyes on, walk through, and give you a sense where you're losing energy and what it's going to cost to fix it. And all those other great things like health and safety stuff that you've been thinking about that I need to take care of that you haven't paid attention to, right? Like a fan in the base in the bathroom, right? If you don't have a fan in your bathroom, it's a really good idea. Uh, questions about that, and then I have the time frame. Questions about how this works, yeah. Everybody, everybody's all, um, should be a Woodstock resident. Now I have had, if people are outside, live outside of Woodstock and they ask to participate, we basically say talk with the contractor, see if they're open to, will you do, what's another town near here, sorry, can't really orient myself. Bridgewater. What? Bridgewater. Bridgewater, will you do Bridgewater? And then the contractor could say, I don't go that far, yeah, sure, I'll do Bridgewater. So I would say that's the way to handle that. But this is mostly Woodstock is signed up for this program. We also have um, a couple other, uh, Heartland, Hartford, Norwich, and Barnard, I think, are the other towns that are participating in Central Law. Um, what else do I need to say about that? Oh, the other thing we want to say is like, so the visual assessment, when they do the walkthrough, it's an assessment. It's an estimate, OK? And that we leave open, and what we've agreed with the contractors is when they come back, do the blower door test, crawl around in the attic, get really you know, down and dirty, that there might be some revisions to that estimate. So they have like 90% of the knowledge they need, but by doing the blower door and doing the more extensive crawling around, they're going to get 100%, and that might reveal more information that will influence the scope and cost of the work. So again, just like any contractor, they come and do an estimate, Come in your house, and it's like in the middle of it, oh, we didn't see this piece here. There's some there's something we didn't, you know, we didn't know when we started out. So um, let me just give you the schedule. Excuse me. So um, we're kind of in the late October, these kickoff events. We're doing these around the state right now. Um, community groups like the Sustainable Woodsuck Energy Advisory. Action Group uh, is kind of lead here, and they'll be doing other outreach. Do you have any announcements, like other workshops or other events that are? You got something coming up with the Halloween, right? Well, we'll be, we'll be trick or treat. I 
would be out three for three being uh, handing out weather stripping to adults. So that will be super exciting. Okay. Um, but no, uh, we don't have any other. Uh, we, we will be doing some more events between now and December 15th and then afterwards as well. Okay. Um, the contractors will be, and I know that Hans has already, Franz has already got out there conducting the walkthroughs. Between now, we've given them into next March to do these walkthroughs, just because it's a really busy time of year, so to accommodate that. Um, and then for those residents who make a commitment to move forward or finish their actions by Earth Day, which is April 22nd, uh, we have a $500 raffle that we're kicking in from the Fish and Sea Mont to help go toward the cost of the project. So it's kind of a little sweetener, kind of a little incentive to act by a certain time. Can you tell me one of those weather stripping thingies? Just Certainly. like Frisbee up here, you know? <laughs> okay, that didn't really work. So <clears throat> I did want to tell you, remember I talked about, it's not like, oh, I have to do it all myself or I have to do a contractor. It's like, do what you can with the skills, ability, money, what you got, and then hire a contractor, do the rest or other work that you don't feel like doing. Did I tell you I was in Grafton crawling around? In, no, I was in Grafton like two days ago crawling around in a woman's senior's house. We were doing some volunteer work in a crawl space, you know, four feet high for like four hours. I was telling Franz, whatever you want to pay these guys, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like crawling around in eggs and basements, it's like, you know, I'll pay you whatever you want. You know, it's like, it's like road crews. Whatever they make, they can't make enough money. You know, it's like, you know, what a, what a tough job. Anyhow, I divert. Um, so, Fish Through Mind has a pretty cool program going right now where <coughs> if you're a do-it-yourselfer, um, we will reimburse you for up to $100 for weatherization materials or other tools that you need uh, to do it yourself. And that can include a spray foam gun, which is a really, really cool device for sealing up gaps in your attic and in your basement. They can cost, the good ones cost about $50 or $60. You can get it recovered here. We have a list of types of act actions you can take. You need to do three of those actions out of the seven. Could be sealing your attic hatch. That's like one of them. Yeah, putting, uh, what's another one? Weatherized windows. Right? So if you do three of those seven, send us a picture, send us a receipt. You can get reimbursed for up to $100. And these little guys are free. Anybody comes in, a little weather stripping. This weather stripping, to be honest, is, I would call it limited application, not high use area, like an attic hatch. Great application. Uh, main exterior door, mm, wouldn't use it for that. So, um, did you guys bring the weather eyes display? The weather stripping display? Uh, well, Franz brought his, which is lightweight, more impressive. But uh, no, we didn't. No. Okay, bring that next time. Anyhow, there's all sorts of cool information about what materials to use for what different products. I think that's it for me. Thoughts, questions? Gonna get Franz up here in a minute. Yeah. Um, this program is primarily is a residential program. Um, I would reach out to contractors participating and ask them. You know, and maybe depending on the type of business, they might be willing to extend the same service. Um, would the loan um, possibly apply? Would the what? The loans. Lo that's a, that is definitely a residential program. We do have a, another program, uh, Fish of Vermont, which is working with the credit union, is called the Business Energy Loan Program. Uh, kind of a higher threshold, uh, up to five years, various interest rates. So. If you go to the Efficiency Vermont website, uh, look up business energy loan, um, they could provide information for that. Thank you. Sure. I mean, if you're like a business that's operating out of a home, that's a, that's a residential program. I just wanted to point out too, there, there's an incentive program for commercial entities as well. Um, the $2,000 that you can get back from Efficiency Vermont is home performance with Energy Star program, which is for residents. There is a, uh, and I, what is, I'm, I'm not sure what the program is called for business. Building performance. Building performance with, um, and I think the incentives are actually higher for. Yeah, like up to $5,000. Yeah, so there's a um, pretty commercial. strong program yeah. there as well. Thank you. Thanks for reminding me. Okay. Right, so if you think about it, there's rebates to bring down the total cost of getting the work done for both businesses and households. And there are low interest loan programs. 
to help cover the remainder of that cost. Right? So, other questions about how to participate in this program? Why should I participate in this program? Who's uncomfortable in their house in this? Who roasted this summer in their house on the second floor? Who was like just really hot? Anybody really hot upstairs in their second floor bedrooms? No? Pretty hot? You were pretty hot? Can I suggest that you sign up for the button-up program? Look, where do you live? Where? Reading. Just south of Woodstock. Oh, it is. Talk to your contractor. See what he's willing to do. <laughs> Other questions for um, thoughts? Yeah. All right. So I think am I supposed to like? Yeah. Uh, well, I give Franz an opportunity to yeah. talk to folks and introduce himself, talk about his experience, and, um, and 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 people if you have specific questions for Franz about the work that you, maybe you have a specific issue you're trying to address. No. Let me make you happy, everybody. All right. I think I'm going to go through the suit there. Let's see if we're working yeah. I'm, I'm just a mess. All right. Okay. Let's see how this works. <coughs> it's been a while since I wore a microphone. Yeah, just to get in your pocket. Okay. My Thanks name is Thomas so I uh, run Van de Ven Construction. We are uh, operating out of uh, Heartland. That's where our shop is. I currently got four employees, somebody in the office, and myself. Um, we focus on home energy efficiency as the broadest interpretation you can have. Uh, we've, I was one of the first seven contractors to sign up with the uh, Home Performance with Energy Star program of Efficiency Vermont. That was in 2007. Um, and I basically, I, I come from a European background. I grew up in the Netherlands, got my uh, engineering degree there. and. I basically have always been interested in energy, partially because over there energy is ridiculously expensive because of high taxes. And, and it's something that I naturally carried over. And one, one time I was building an, an, uh, an addition for somebody and I was trying to hire an energy or a, uh, an installation contractor to help me with that project. And I was so disappointed with the lack of sophistication that I bought my first installation machine. Well, now I got three. I got some people that are certified in installing insulation. Half of our business consists of doing what we call insulation retrofits projects. And as far as the eligibility for these type of walkthroughs, um, anybody in the local area qualifies. Tenants, that's a little bit of a different cake because those projects typically don't go very far unless I actually got to meet the homeowner. But for homeowners or out of state, Second homeowners, um, anybody pretty much qualifies as long as they're within our normal service area. We are uh, in a lucky position that we don't have to go very far, and as a result, we, uh, we got the chance to focus on local projects. Um, one of the questions I run into a lot, and I want to touch base on that because for some people that's of, of a lot of interest, is, oh, I'm so cold, I need to have new windows. And there's one very specific example I'm thinking of here in the house in Quichi. And in Quichi, at least in that condominium complex, they got monthly propane meter delivery. So every month she got a bill and got to pay it that month and see what she used that month. It was a very, fairly modest uh, condominium. And um, she said, oh, I'm so cold. Um, these aluminum frame windows, they have to go on with all new windows. Sure, we do that kind of work, no problem. But is that really what you want, or do you just want to get more comfortable? So we talked a little bit, and we talked a little bit more, and in the end, I ended up putting together a proposal for doing a relatively straightforward insulation job in her attic, in her knee wall, and in a cantilevered floor. Her main floor was narrower than her second floor, so that section of floor that a cantilevered was, um, as it usually is, especially in the Quichi area, poorly insulated. And a year later, I ran into her somewhere, and she said, oh, this is great. I, um, even though the winter after was substantially harsher, she had saved for the months November, December, and January, because we did the job at the end of January, she had saved roughly a third of her heating bill with her aluminum frame windows. So, and, and probably just roughing the cost, all of the insulation retrofit work was one third of the cost of doing just new windows, and she probably wouldn't have noticed it. 
There, there have been several jobs that we've worked at that homeowners said, well, I got all new windows, but I can't tell the difference. It's like, yeah, because you have a really poorly insulated attic, or maybe it's well insulated but not air sealed, and a poorly insulated basement, or maybe it's well insulated but very poorly air sealed. You need both, like, like we've just discussed. Um, there are a lot of projects that we've worked on. Um, I just, Monday, counted up how many projects I've quoted. This year so far, just calendar year to date, I've quoted 226 jobs. So we do, what I focus on is what we call medium-sized jobs and smaller. We like to get a day's worth of work out of it, but we also will take on, on occasion, partial, partial days. And we need to kind of get it done in a matter of a few weeks. If someone says, I oh, need to have to get a whole house built, We've done that several times in the past, but that's not really our focus in business because we have so many customers out there that are looking to get our response in a reasonable type of time frame and building a whole house takes me off the market for just simply too long. Another question I want to expand on a little bit, this whole focus on cost, okay? Um, this, this type of work typically is not inexpensive. It's fairly expensive work, attic, is, attic work and basement work and crawl space work and knee wall spaces. It's hard to move, it's slow, the house is usually occupied, you need to keep your workspace clean. All of that said together, the project is nowhere near as cost efficient as if you do it in a new construction job, but most, most people don't just build a new house because they're upset with their energy bill. So, um, looking at this saying, okay, I'm going to do this weatherization project and it's going to cost, well, the average job is 7,800 um, bucks. What am I going to save and how does it exactly work and what am I going to get? One of the uh, cost factors that I want to bring to your attention, which is more and more becoming a driver for some people to actually uh, kick some initial thoughts about weatherization of that center, it's not so much of, okay, if I'm going to invest this $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, how, how much am I going to save my energy bill? But what is that going to do to the mold that's currently happening on my roof deck? Or what is that going to happen to this continuous have to wash our windows on the inside with bleach because I can't keep the mold under control? That expense of potential rot as it builds up or potential mold and then it, it never gets better by itself. Um, where do you classify that in your payback? And I'm, I'm, I don't have an answer for that, but on the other hand, just saying that, oh, we're doing a $10,000 job, I'm gonna save $1,000 in a year in energy, so it's gonna pay, be a 10-year payback. Well, maybe. If your house rots down in the meantime, it doesn't really matter. So from that perspective, I want to, and, and there are surprisingly many jobs out there that the reason for doing the work isn't so much the energy savings, actually currently with the $2.50 or so uh, fuel price, it's more often by, driven by comfort, um, health and safety in the form of mold avoidance or um, this, this ice dam situation and I'm getting older and I don't want to rake the roof every time it snows or if I don't, I'm gonna have to fix a sheetrock in the spring. That type of repair work, that should be part of this cost-benefit calculation that everybody, I believe, everybody should do before kicking off a project like this. Um, there are some homes that also, for instance, need a new roof. And if it happens to be a house that has a lot of cathedral ceilings, one of the considerations could be that while the roof is off, to also upgrade the insulation. That's part of the reason why, for instance, we've gotten into so many roofing projects as of late. Um, about five years ago or six years ago, we had a project in Grassy Lane here in Woodstock, and I'd lined up a roofer. We took the whole thing apart, got rid of the mold, upgraded the insulation, put new plywood on, new roofing, uh, new roofing felt and underlayment, and I called up the roofer and said, you know, the first section of the house is, is ready. And they're like, what? First section? No, no, no. You call me when you're ready with the whole thing, and then come with a big crew and we get it hammered out. I said, but it's November. We're going to get snowed out. I need a roof on this darn building now. They said, no, 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 no. So that day I became a roofer. <laughs> now, now we do so many roofing jobs that I actually bought my own standing seam machine, and we bring that to the job, and we kind of leapfrog the building. Some of these buildings we work on are, some of them are, are pretty modest and straightforward and, and clean and easy and straightforward. Some of them are not so much with 
all kinds of detail, and we're going to be there for a while. Um, another comment I heard earlier I want to expand on a little bit is that, well, this kind of work is kind of involved. It really is. It's messy. Um, it's always inside of your house. Um, not all the products we work with are all that pleasant to be around. Fiberglass is one of them, and you don't touch it, and it itches you. Spray foam is another one. You need to really wear respiratory protection while it's installed, but a day after, it's fully cured, and the vapors are gone, and it's actually one of the preferred materials in hospitals and, and schools. We've installed a fair bit of it at Dartmouth. Um, but it's, it's one of those things that you don't have to chew the whole thing off. There's one house in, Hart, uh, in uh, Tassville that this lady spent her tax return seven years in a row with us. That's each time we did another piece. At first we started a crawl space, then we had a basement, then we took our master bedroom apart and ripped off the sheetrock and sprayed foam and put new sheetrock up. Then we had the guest room, then we had the other guest room. Anyway, right now that house is uncomfortably hot. She likes it, but I don't. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things. We'll work with you, but you need to keep in mind that some of this work is it's, it's kind of involved because we need to get to places where basically the inside and the outside meet, which means walls, cathedral ceiling, attic flat, basement and crawl space walls, places like that. So um, these walkthroughs, they, they typically take an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. Most people find them quite interesting that I come to the house and all I do is look. Sometimes I'll bring my infrared, infrared camera with me and I say, see, this is what I see. And then they say, well, what do you see? And I say, well, we have this cathedral ceiling in your master bathroom and the first eight feet, the paint is beautiful. And the top four feet, it's all bad. And I say, yeah, we've been trying to paint this and somehow there's new paint. No, 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 no. That's nothing to do with your paint. That is an exterior wall. And I say, what do you mean? It's, it's inside, the, it's in the middle of the house. This is specifically a house in Norwich that we worked on and the homeowner afterwards was just like, huh, how, how, how did you know? And I said, well, I didn't, I saw it. I, the paint there was going bad and it was more or less at the eight feet line and above it, you could see that the paint had gotten abused. There was something going on with a moisture problem. And what happened was your attic was at eight feet and in the, in the master bathroom, I went, cathedral in the roof and had a vertical wall where it transitioned to the hallway. And that vertical wall was basically a cold ventilated attic on one side and a damp sweaty bathroom, very nice bathroom, but still damp bathroom, condensating on the sheetrock. Sheetrock doesn't like moisture for very long. Paint can't handle moisture. And as a result, that, that wall there should be an exterior wall. And with that drooping fiberglass and a little bit of a rodent problem, that didn't last that long and it got cold and Moisture finds, moisture is actually fabulous. It can find the cold spot in your house without any trouble. People say, oh, I, uh, I have uh, bad windows. No, you don't have bad windows. You've got a flooded basement, go fix it. You know, there, there are so many things that play into this and that's what, what I like to pride myself on is I go into a house and I make notes, I measure up some basic things and some of the things are repetitive. Okay, yeah, this attic again is barely insulated, full of holes, you have rodents and the electric is not up to code. Whatever, that's the typical stuff. But we also, I will also walk into a house and a homeowner asks me this, or they have an elderly person that's about to move in, or they have whatever problem they have, I like to hear it, because the way my quote looks, and contrary to what was said earlier, my quote looks, option one, attic insulation, this is what you got, that is what, this is what I promise we will do, and this is the price you're gonna to have to pay. That's not an estimate, it's that much. If, it's, if we get it done in 10 minutes, or whether it takes us 10 days, that doesn't change the cost. And we have gotten enough experience in quoting projects like that, that I don't have to say like, yeah, but uh, if, if, if. The only jobs that I specifically exclude from fixed costs are rot repair. Because sometimes you see a hole in the siding that's that, that big, and $3,000 later, you got the section of wall rebuilt. So that's something you can, what I can see, I will quote, and it's gonna be a fixed cost. Even after a relatively modest walkthrough visit, and I include everything that I see, because it's not my deal as far as what you're gonna do with your house. It's your money, your house, and your project. I'm just there to help you out whatever way you want. And the quote is there, and I like to do the quote once. 
So I'll give you a quote for insulation and a new window and uh, plugging up the doggy door, which you shouldn't have. But anyway, um, stuff like that. So you will get a fixed quote. And then when you decide to go ahead with the work, I'll come back, do the energy audit, do the blower door test, do some more infrared scanning, and I might find something new, specifically in walls of, of somewhat older homes. I get some surprises with the insulation. What has happened over the years, maybe the cellulose was blown in, has settled down, because back then they didn't have the properly chewed up uh, cellulose and it wasn't fine enough, or they didn't use a two-stage blower like we got nowadays, or whatever. Some bay was forgotten, uh, which we've done as well, but still. Um, or maybe there's something else going on, an area got remodeled, an area did not get remodeled, and as a result, um, there's something specific in the wall that you can't see. Granted, quite often by the paint pattern on the bathroom like I described earlier, or here on the house number 26, the green, there we did all kinds of work on that building. We insulated the bathroom or the basement, insulated the attic, we insulated main floor walls, second floor walls. The only wall we couldn't get to was the one wall that was the kitchen wall, and they couldn't keep paint on the building. Two years, the paint on that wall fell off in sheets that big. And it was the same Benjamin Moore, perfectly fine paint. What happened in that specific wall, and I just want to stop there for just a second, is because the whole house was now insulated with spray foam, which I believe is the best insulation product that you can actually use. Vapor panels, of course, have higher performance yet, but that's kind of tricky to install and definitely not suitable for a retrofit. Spray foam is semi-suitable for a retrofit because it means that you either have to take the siding off or the sheetrock off to be able to spray it on. You can't just pour it in a hole and hope it will self-install itself. So um, in this house, it was a complete rebuild, a complete gut remodel, really is what we call it. There was this one wall that basically stayed with its, well, hopefully R7 or so rock wool insulation. And that wall was now the cold wall. So all of the normal moisture happenings in the house, shower, cooking, panting dog, fish tank, um, slightly damp basement, um, whatever goes on in the house moisture wise, that one wall was always the cold one. So it would work its way through the outlets and around the baseboard trim and end up in the wall cavity. And in the wall cavity was some rock wool, which is similar to fiberglass, has absolutely no ability to stop air from moving. So the air would flow there, condensate in the back of the siding, and then the sun would come out, this water won't evaporate in, there goes your paint. It happens all the time. There are several houses like that, and once you, I'm, I swear I'm gonna get an accident someday because of that. Oh, whoa, there, I saw it right there. I missed the siding and there, it's a whole sheet coming off. It's because there's a moisture problem of some sort and it's maybe between floor levels or it's in a space where there used to be a window or there's always some kind of a pattern and that's what I'm particularly look for. And then I can say, okay, Mr. Homeowner, you are the expert on this house, but I'm the expert on what I see. So this is what I think we should investigate a little bit more. And this is what I believe is going on, and I, I'm wrong a lot, but I'm also right quite often. So, so anyway, that's, that's kind of how I run the business. I, I got four employees that have been with me for an extended period of time. And Jeremiah sprays most of my foam. He's been with me six years. I taught him how to spray foam, and now he's so good he can teach me how to spray foam. Because I, um, like, I, like I tell the guys, I drive around. That's all I do. Um, but uh, all kidding aside, I, I, I take our business serious and uh, uh, some people here in the audience have seen some of our work. Um, some of us haven't and I would like to come and visit you. Give me a call, sign up for the program. Um, if you have questions about your house, it's always a free quote and, and free advice. Um, and, and with the understanding that I work with people that are seriously planning on doing something. There are, of course, always people that are like, oh, yeah, I'll get another free contract out there and get an entertainment visit out of it. And um, These visits are free to all of you, and I extend that with all gratitude, but on the other hand, um, I'd like it to be taken serious that nobody just picks up the phone and say, like, okay, I'll, I'll want to talk to somebody. Call me up and we can talk about some, something. But I'd be happy to come, come to your house and look around and see what there is to see. Okay. Any questions? Anything I can expand on or something else that came up earlier that... Will you come to Bridgewater? 
Yep, I come to Bridgewater. Yep. Now we work out of Heartland and we basically have a rule that anybody that lives within a, well, I'd like to say 20, but we'll probably go to 30 minutes away from Heartland. And our typical service area is, um, of course, Heartland, um, Norwich, Lebanon, uh, Woodstock, uh, White River Junction, Hartford, uh, Barnard, uh, Bridgewater. We don't quite get to Killington. We've done a couple of projects in Killington, but somehow we don't get that many customers there. We have done a couple of projects in, Har in uh, Hanover. Um, we never really go to Springfield. We've done some projects in Reading and um, uh, South Woodstock, um, Brownsville, Windsor. That's kind of, you know, within a 20 minute circle, that's pretty much where we go. Okay. So, thank you, hey, no problem. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you all again very much for coming. Uh, we appreciate that. And um, uh, even though Franz and I share an accent, he's from uh, the Netherlands, I'm from Transylvania. Um, but uh, thank you again very much for coming out. Uh, please take, take some time to fill out one of the questionnaires or take one of our cards and you can go online and fill it out there. Uh, we are the Sustainable Woodstock Energy Action Group. We've been working on this uh, with weatherization for quite a while now. This is actually, I think, our fourth our weatherization campaign in this community. Uh, so we do know quite a bit about um, this, and we worked closely with Franz and with Paul for, for a while now, and can attest to both of their, um, their professionalism and the quality of their work, and have not had any complaints about Franz yet. Um, because somebody that had an issue with the driveway, and Franz came back the next day and fixed it up at uh, no cost. So that's the type of person he is. We're excited to have him as our contractor. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions, any concerns. Uh, that's what we're here for. We care about reducing our carbon footprint. So thank you very much, and I hope you all have a really wonderful night. Please uh, keep pizza with you. I don't, I don't eat pizza. <laughs>